what you're looking at here is basically the worst nightmare that you can have when you are painting a car. And I see all kinds of problems over here that I didn't see yesterday. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. inexpensive acrylic enamel. Look at this right here. <laughs> and you think I'm going to go ahead and give the customer his car like that? Yeah, okay. Sure thing. I could put 10 coats of clear on that and it wouldn't do nothing because what you're looking at here, the paint did not stick. Okay, it didn't stick to the surface. So if the paint doesn't stick, the clear will definitely not stick. So I have got to go around every single door jam on this vehicle and I have got to sand it down and re-prep the car up. You can see where it peeled down in here. Look at this. Peeled down in there and look at the peeling we got right here. Okay. Is that from piss poor uh, prep job? Is that what that is? That the, it wasn't prepped properly and sanded properly? No it's not. What it's from is the previous paint that was applied to this car. Now, whether it was original or whether it was aftermarket paint, whatever the paint was that was on this vehicle, all right, it raised up through everything. And when I say everything, I'm talking about the sealers and the primers and everything else. And then the chemical reaction started with our um, urethane reducer. The urethane reducer in the paint that you mix your paint with is what causes this reaction right here. And it usually doesn't start showing up until after you actually lay a coat of clear on it. I'm going to show you how to uh, professionally fix this problem. And I mean, I'm just telling you, I hope and pray to God that this doesn't happen to you because this is like one of the worst things that can happen to you when painting a car. So I was actually working on the door when y'all 
uh, came in on this little venture. But what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you, I'm going to start from scratch right here, and I'm going to show you how to fix your problem when the problem arises such as this. Now I will let you know that this actually has one flash coat of clear on it, and then I stopped right there. I didn't do any more. I stopped because I saw that started to blister. And when you're in here painting, you're not really paying attention to that. But by the time I got the clear on it, I saw it blistering. And then what I did is I stopped spraying my clear and I started looking at all of the rest of the jams. Now here's a section I came across right here. It was blistering. All right. And then if we walk over here, well, we had a serious problem on this one. You can see right here that it was blistering very, very seriously and very bad all the way down. So what we're going to do to get this little venture started is you're going to want to get a piece of 80 grit. That's right, you heard me straight, 80 grit sandpaper. We got to start with some coarse sandpaper and work our way down to feathering it all out. And the only way to really dig into the problem is taking our 80 grit sandpaper and then sanding that. Let me see if I can get a better angle here. Okay. And this is a used piece. Let me get a new piece of sandpaper. Um, I had a new piece. Where did it go? I don't have my new piece of 80 grit sandpaper. It has disappeared. Let me go get another piece of DA sandpaper so we can get on with this mess. So let me ask you a question. How does a piece of 80 grit sandpaper grow legs and walk away and disappear? I don't know. I really don't know. But I know one thing, when you're frustrated, mad, and pissed off, it seems like everything you do and everything you touch actually grows legs and walks away from you. And look what I just found. I just found my piece of sandpaper that was sitting right up here. And I didn't see it because it's white. And it, it camouflaged itself because it said, hey, my friend Pete, you're mad. You're pissed off. I don't want you touching me. I'm scared of you. So we'll go ahead and fold that. So now what we got here, now what we got, we got three pieces of 80 grit sandpaper. What you want to do is you want to take your 80 grit sandpaper. Now, I will let you know that this is actually uh, the next day. I had to wait overnight for all this to dry. So we're going to take our 80 grit sandpaper and then what we'll do is we will go ahead and sand the bad area as you can see me doing upside down contortionally so you can see it in the camera. All right, You can see what I'm doing there and uh, I'm actually getting rid of all the wrinklage. We can call that wrinklage because when it's wrinkled that means it's not sticking to the paint or should I say jam. The paint's not sticking to the item that you're painting. So you're going to take your thumb or whatever you got. We will not be using a block on this, by the way. There's no way to get a block in there. And look at the sandpaper. Um, you can see how it's coming up and building up. So it really takes a lot of sandpaper to get this done. But um, as I'm sanding it, you can see that it is being removed and also um, gumming up. Very, very big mess here. Very big mess. It will literally ruin your day when this happens. It will literally take you to the other side of the mountain and say, ha, 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 I got you this time, bitch. That's what it'll do. I found another little spot right here. Um, and you can see as I pull on it with my fingernail, you can see that um, it will just peel right off. So. Once again, we're going to take our sandpaper and we're going to sand it down. Now, once you hit it with 80 grit, you can basically see um, where it will stop peeling off. So you want to go um, about a half an inch to an inch, depending on how big it is. But you want to go past where it is blistering. That's what I call it. I call it blistering. Paint peeling, blistering. And then you want to... Just keep sanding it with your 80 grit. All right, so there's three spots that we got that were blistering, and I think, I think if we look right here, I see some blistering there. Now, you want to look at an area like that, and you're going to tell yourself, 
Um, we got the threshold molding that goes here. Does it go all the way up there? And then you start telling yourself, I don't know if it does or not. Should I take that chance? And if it doesn't, then what's going to happen is you're going to see that. And then you start telling yourself, well, since the paint's peeling off anyway when I use my finger, all right, what's to say that it's not going to peel off later? And then you ask yourself, do I want my reputation of being a professional on that car looking that way? And then you tell yourself, after all the asking, let me get that piece of 80 grit sandpaper, and since i got to do all this other work, I might as well go ahead and do that as well. So we're going to take our hand and we're going to contortion ourselves into the car and we're going to go ahead and sand that off with our 80 grit just like this and you're going to start seeing it peel off like I was explaining to you and it's really a bit so I'm going to have to use my other hand and possibly get down here like this and get in there because now we're actually getting into the vehicle and working on it, if you know what I'm saying. So I see that uh, our jar jam looks okay now that I sanded all this down. Um, I found one more problem child right here. I'm going to go ahead and get that out of there. And look, just by barely standing it, you can see it flakes off. So we're going to get that done. Because you definitely don't want this in the eyeball of the owner. And um, when this happens, believe me, it sticks out like a sore thumb. That's the first thing your eye gets attracted to is problems. I don't know what it is. And the way the world's turning these days, that's all people want to do now is bitch and complain. That's like the biggest thing in the world that something goes wrong, that they have something to bitch and complain about because that's how the world's going to be getting to be. That everybody has to moan and groan. They don't compliment, they don't, they don't um, gesture that you did a beautiful job. All they want to do is find problems to bitch about it. So, you know, this is the deal right here. So the next thing we're going to do, now that we're done doing all that, is we are going to go ahead and wet sand that. Now, we got a procedure of wet sanding it. Because we just can't wet sand it with 400. we got to wet sand it with something that's got more grit in it that's going to help feather that paint out and then we move into the 400. So what I got here is I got a fresh bucket of water, I got a sponge and when we sand this we want to sand it in a way where we're not going to use a lot of water. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're going to wet our item down, um, we're going to take our paper, we're going to dip it in our water just like that and the paper that we're going to use is 320. Now 320 wet is pretty gritty. It's almost equivalent to 180 and that's what we want. But we don't want to use 180 dry because that will just gum the paper up more. What we're now trying to achieve is that we're going to feather all these mistakes out. So if you look at the big picture right there you can see the road map that we got to travel down and we're going to start uh, up here on this area. So I'm just going to take my sponge and then I'm just going to wet it down. I don't want to wet everything. I'm trying to avoid retaping and all this other stuff. And then we're going to repeat our process and we're going to wet sand that and feather out the edges. See? And when you do this, when you're sanding this down, this part here, um, remember we went past the, uh, the wrinkled part with our 80 grit. Well, now you got to go past the 80 grit sanding. So we're going to bring it up here, see? And it doesn't take much. Um, I mean, that's about it right there, really. All right, so we're going to catch that water before it drips everywhere. We're going to wipe that down. And then basically that's what you got right there. Basically. So then we're going to move down here to this area. We're going to keep following our road map down to the uh, bottom of the hill. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to work on feathering all the edges out. And that's what we're concentrating on here is the edges. Because that's really what we need to do. Just like that. 
all right? And you can always tell when the edges are feathered out when you start seeing layers of paint. If you see that it's still peeling off, that means that you're not getting anywhere and you need to go back to step one. But this is what I want to show you right here. Um, you got to do the same thing with this sandpaper as you do with uh, your 80 grit. You got to be able to move the sandpaper around because it will start gumming up. Now, one good thing about using the wet sandpaper, if you notice, you can actually clean the sandpaper off and it's still usable. And then, now that we're in the middle of the mountain here, uh, we just climbed over some boulders and we had to rappel down to this area from here. We're going to go ahead and walk across this ledge and then we're going to slide our way down to the bottom of the hill in this area right here. Taking our sandpaper once again and feathering it out. Very important, you have to feather that out. Always remember that word when doing body work, paint and body, feather, feather, feather. It's important that you feather everything out and get it down to where it should be. You're going to take your sponge and then you'll clean your sandpaper off, all right? And just keep feathering until you don't feel anything on there. If you feel a ridge, Believe me, that ridge will show up. All right. I feel a ridge right on the edge here, so I'm going to take my 320. I'm just going to go like that just to get rid of that little edge that we had. There it is. Okay. I just rinsed my sponge out. I took all the water out of it. You can see that right there. There we go. And I'm going to take my sponge. I don't want to use any chemicals on this. No uh, wax and grease remover, no rubbing alcohol, nothing. All right, my hands are clean. All I've done is use water with it. We don't want to use anything. All we want to do is dry that off. Any chemical that you put on it can make a reaction. So we're going to dry that off and let it dry. We're going to get all of the water out that might have fallen down in here when we were sanding it clean our paper off around the area and then by the time we go all the way around the car we'll come back and wipe everything down with a wipe all and then it's ready to apply our sealer but you can see how I feathered all that out and then you're gonna take your finger and it feels really really nice feels like we got just a little bit right there so I'm gonna go ahead and take my sandpaper this is a very hard area to sand right here this is a thumb thumb action and I'm just going to sand that down and just feather it out just a little more using my 320. And then we'll go ahead and clean it off, getting all the water off of the paper and everything. And then I think, let me go ahead and get this area right here, just like that. So. Let me go around the whole car. I got a lot of sand to do. This is going to take several hours. Um, it's a time consuming job. It's a depressing job. It's a job that nobody wants to do. Especially when you're self employed, it just makes things worse for you. And then once it's all prepped, I will be back to show you how to fix the problem. Um, this has really, really made me start thinking twice about keeping my business open. Um, I am now 57 years old, 56, I don't even know, and for more than three quarters of my life, all I've basically ever done is work seven days a week, 18 hours a day, no free time, no nothing, just work, go home, sleep, work, go home, sleep, and when you run into actions like this, um, it basically just turns that professional job or professional whatever you want to call it into a job and a lot of people ask me what's your favorite car I don't really have a favorite car because when I work on cars and you work on them all your life it's just a job and that's all it is and when you run into problems and and fall into factors of stuff like this right here you're basically losing money and that uh, $20 an hour has just turned into $10 an hour 
and then when you find more problems it just turned into five dollars an hour and before you know it you're only making um, about two dollars and thirty seven cents an hour um, restoring and painting uh, this whole car so yeah it's a big situation this is a big situation this is a big problem but the solutions are there and another thing I want to go ahead and mention is that we can't quit we can't give up and we can't just walk away from it because we started the job we dedicated ourselves to the job and the job's got to be done. I'll be back. watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.